Hello everybody and welcome back to this channel. Um, I've just come over to visit friends and family in England for a week. Um, so the video that I'm just putting together now is actually from last week. Um, it's a bit of mix up of bits and pieces but I thought I'd put it together anyway. Um, so I hope you enjoy it and the next video I'm going to do is what's inside this garage here. So I'll film that um, probably tomorrow and then put it up sometime this week. So um, again, thanks for watching. Um, hope you enjoy it. Please like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, next time. Hello again. Um, I just got a text from my friend that he wants to come and have a look at the uh, 1970 bug that was in the last video that um, I'm hoping to sell. So. I'm just on my way now to my friend, or back to my friend Ollie's place and uh, let's see if uh, he falls in love with it and wants to buy it. Fingers crossed. Right, that's it. Deal done. It's sold. Um, it's going to a good friend of mine so I'm super happy and he seems to be quite happy about it so brilliant stuff so now i can concentrate more on uh other projects like getting my carmen gear done and uh it takes a bit of stress off as well because i had this sitting here in storage for years and it was quite frustrating you know and um so i i'm really happy that it's going to him as well so i think next i need to sort out the uh, blue 65 and get that sold perfect time of year to sell it i think um summer has just begun so Let's get it done. So now I'm gonna head back to work and um, do a bit of work on the Karma gear engine. It's been a while. Right, see you soon. Right, back at the workshop. Had a spot of late lunch. Kind of super excited that the car is sold. Um, so I need to get on with this engine. Uh, so I just got this box ready that has the pistons and the barrels. So this is the next thing to um, tackle and I need to change these um, rings, piston rings. Uh, and also I just pulled this out from one of the other boxes. I need to put the um, oil strainer, um, the gaskets and the um, cap that goes on in with a draining plug. Um, so I can put that on as well. Um, so basically what you have to do is you have to check these um, barrels on, on the inside um, because they should have uh, like these marks on them, uh, like crisscross marks on them. They shouldn't be super, super shiny and they should have some um, key on them for holding the oil. If they're really super shiny and smooth, the oil can't cling to the side of the barrel uh, and that's not a good thing. Um, so they should have some marks on. I can see now that they have, um, but there's also um, this, I can't remember what they call it. It's a weird looking brush that you put on the end of a um, drill and you, I, you put WD-40 on it to lubricate it and it has these balls on the end of these wires. I'll go and get it in a minute to show you. And it puts the scores back onto the edge of the barrel so it can grip the oil um, to lubricate it. Uh, and also I need to change these rings, like I said. Um, there's a couple of ways of doing it that I've seen is that you can have like these special pliers that separate the rings and then you can lift them off of the end of the piston. Because as you can see, there is a gap, I don't know if you can see that, there's a gap on the piston ring and there's three different piston rings on each piston uh, which all have a certain task uh, which we'll go through. So um, I'm going to go and see if I can find this tool and also the, the tool or the thing, the brush thing that puts the scoring on the barrels. Uh, and another way I've seen them put these rings on is that you basically put one end in and then you just move it around like like that and it, and it 
goes on. But you have to be careful not to stretch them because if you stretch them, um, obviously they, they don't have the right amount of tension uh, when they're inside the barrel. Um, also, another thing you have to do is you have to test, or not test, you have to measure the gap um, when this is fully compressed. You need to measure the gap um, of the piston ring. So we'll go through that as well. You basically put one of the rings inside of the barrel without the piston, and then you get a feeler gauge and you put it between the gap and measure it. Um, if it's too tight, you have to file a bit off. So that is next. Also, I have in here, uh, these are the studs that go onto the engine block. I can show you. Um, oops. So, these studs um, go in here. And I think there's three or four different lengths. So you have to get, obviously get them in the right place. And then the barrels um, slide over those like that. Um, and also, if you look, the barrels are like a D shape. So um, they meet in the middle like that. So that's what's next. So I think I'm first gonna put this in because then that's the job done. Um, there's also a stud actually missing, so I have to look in the box to see if the spare stud is there. Also check if these are loose because these can actually pull out. If you're changing, the oil's been changed many times then it can um, like mess up the threads or if you over tighten them it can pull these studs out of the case. Um, I checked these, these all feel nice and tight, they're not wiggly or loose or anything like that but obviously I have one missing. Um, you can also put like a, a bolt in from the other side and tighten it. That might be what, I don't know if I can actually get one in there. Maybe I'll just get a stud and I'll put some sealant on there so it, it can't leak. So a few bits to do. I just made this little stud. Um, I got a, a bolt and I cut the head off and I'm just going to use some um, thread locker uh, to hold that in place and it will seal it as well. Um, and then you have these two gaskets and uh, this gauze, I mean it's not as efficient as a modern oil filter um, but on the standard engines this is all that you had as an oil filter. So it's just like a piece of gauze and the oil flows through it and catches any big bits but yeah the mesh is not that fine so um, but I'm not going to run uh, a modern oil filter so that this is just going to be standard. So this is going to go on. So you basically put a gasket on first. Then you put this in that way. Then another gasket. And then you put this end cap on. Um, and it has a drain plug in the middle. Um, but you're, you have to take this off every time you change the oil um, to clean the gauze out. Um, so I'm going to get this in so I get something done. The GoPro SD card decided to stop working as well so I'm back on my phone. I only used it for a couple of minutes and now it stopped working so not had much luck with that so far. Uh, so yeah, I'll also, uh, this is the oil um, pressure sensor. Uh, I'm just going to put some sealant on there, this stuff. I'm just going to put a little glob of that on there and put that in. It has a really big, um, you have to use quite a big spanner on this, but you really doesn't obviously need to be too tight because this, well this is made of steel I believe, but obviously the case is this magnesium alloy. So even though you use a big spanner on this, don't tighten it up too much because you'll rip this fine thread in the case and then you'll be in trouble. A neat little trick if you're putting a stud in like this, um, if you lock two nuts together, um, it will give you something to put a spanner on and wind this in. Um, otherwise, you don't want to use like a pair of pliers or anything like that because you will ruin the thread. Um, this way it keeps the thread nice, so just get a 10 mil 
and just wind this in. And um, yeah, like I said, I just put a little bit of thread lock on there because I don't want these spinning out when I change the oil and it should seal it as well. You shouldn't you need to use any sealant on these gaskets either. It should be just enough to put the gasket on there. Um, and then this hole lines up with the pickup, oil pickup tube that you can see there. Oops. So you just put that on there. Slide this on. And then you put the next gasket. This isn't such a good quality one, so it doesn't slide on, but yeah. So you just put the next gasket on and then you put this on and then I need to find the copper. It has little copper washers with locking nuts. So in the gasket kit, you have these little uh, copper washers. Um, this is a crush washer for the drain plug and I have these six M6 um, nuts and this is really cool because these are the original ones uh, with the end caps on them because uh, normally with it if you buy like a, a kit they just come with a, a normal um, nut but it's really nice to have these original ones and tighten these just the same as you would anything else like we've done on the engine you go in like a pattern opposite like this you know and gradually just nip them up and you really don't want to go too tight just nip them up nicely and hopefully they all tighten up yep they're all tightening up that's awesome boom done i'll just take this out and put the new crush washer in and that's done I've already put this in as well. Okay, I just went and got these brushes, but these, what we have, are actually too big. Um, so basically they have these abrasive balls and they come in different grades. I don't know what the grades are, but they have different colors on the end. Um, but you put this on the end of a drill and then what you would do is um, soak it with WD-40 as a lubricant and then when this is spinning you move it up and down so here I'm just experimenting with the old rings so I've just popped this one off and the method I've seen how they've done it on other YouTube videos that I've seen is that you get one end in like that and then you just work this around like that and it should little bit hard with one hand it should just pop on like that without stretching it um, so I'm gonna try that a few times and then um, try the same with the new ones but I need to check the gap as well uh, first right I just popped an old one off again so what you do is you put it in here like that and you can see that gap there so that gap has to be a certain width there's a tolerance and the reason that there is a gap is that when the engine warms up everything expands and this um, gap will close obviously if that gap is too small when it expands um, it won't have enough room for the expansion and that will cause problems being the ring being too tight so um, I need to check in a book what the tolerances are and I'm having a feeling that I don't think I'm going to have to adjust these I'm hoping um, but we'll see like I said never done this before so this is what I've done so far is is stuff I've covered previously on the other engine build but this is all new territory for me so this is cool um, after I've rebuilt this engine I will have a lot more knowledge about the engine builds so yeah I'm going to measure this gap and then I'm going to do a little research to see what the gap should be 
and um, then I'm going to take one of these new ones out and try it. Right, I just measured the gap and it's uh, 1.25 um, millimeters. So I don't have the book with me at the moment, so I need to check that in the book when I get back. But um, I think I'm going to have to leave it there today um, because I'm not sure if I'm going to hone these um, because they are, they do look pretty good, you know, but I want a second opinion. And um, yeah, so I'm kind of stuck a bit now, but um, I have some a little bit of research to do, so I'll continue this tomorrow. Plus, I don't know if I've lost all the footage from previously to uh, that was on the GoPro because it says there's a problem with the SD card that it needs to be formatted. So yes, I'm going to continue tomorrow. So there we have it. Um, like I said, the video was a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, I thought it was worth including. Um, like I said, tomorrow I'll show you what's inside this. So that's exciting. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. So until next time, excellent. Thanks for watching. Bye.